Today you join me in West Silvertown on London's Royal Victoria Dock for an insight into our specialist enabling works package on the former Rankhovis Premier Mill. Road Art are very familiar with the site, having previously worked on a three-year asbestos removal and demolition project on the Millennium Mills building to prepare it for redevelopment. Our work on the Rank Hovis building are part of a much wider £3.5 billion regeneration project of London's Silvertown. The overall scheme will include the construction of over 6,500 new homes as well as new arts and leisure facilities. Due to the current condition and the structural integrity of the Rank Hovis building, it was decided that it was unsuitable for repurpose and would therefore be demolished as part of our enabling works package. The overall project program will be 22 weeks consisting of three phases. Phase one would be the ecological mitigation works, phase two, the scaffold protection works, and phase three, the structural demolition of the building. As with any demolition project, there's a requirement to undertake ecological assessments to determine the presence of any protected species. These assessments undertaken by expert ecologists determined that bats were present in the building. Working with Natural England and the ecologists, we devised a strategy to undertake ecological mitigation works to ensure that the bats wouldn't be present prior to demolition. The demolition machinery that we're utilising on site is a 30 metre high rich Komatsu excavator. In addition, due to the bat mitigation procedures, we are also utilising a 45 metre articulator boom on site. If the weather drops below five degrees, this is when we commence with thermal imaging. Due to the location of the building and the north elevation being directly at the dock edge, a protection scaffold was required prior to demolition to ensure that no demolition or risings ended up in the waterway. Due to the scaffold oversailing the water, this posed several challenges in terms of access and how the scaffold would be supported during construction. A 70 metre pontoon was installed to facilitate the construction of the first lift of the scaffold. A 30 metre high scaffold was then constructed using cantilever techniques with the whole weight of the scaffold being supported by the structure of the building. The scaffold was then wrapped in monoflex to provide a protective layer to the waterway. With the scaffold now constructed, we were then able to move on to the demolition phase. The demolition works will be undertaken in three phases. Behind me are phases one and two, which are the front sections of the building, and phase three being the back section of the building, which is the northern elevation on the dock edge. During phase three, the scaffold will be progressively dismantled as the building is reduced in height. Recycling and reuse of materials on site is a fundamental part of this scheme. Over 800 tonne of steel, as well as wood recovered from the building, will be segregated on site before being sent away for recycling. It's anticipated that over 50,000 bricks will be salvaged and repurposed as part of the new development scheme and 2,000 tonne of concrete will be crushed and used as backfill. An integral part of the demolition process will be to recover historical artefacts from the building, such as the flour mill spirals. These items will be recorded and then stored in a secure location for future use. We're undertaking these works on behalf of our client, GLA Land and Property, who are overseeing the wider regeneration of the Silvertown area. After the above ground demolition is completed, we will move on to removal of the basement, the basement slab and the slab up to three metres deep. And finally, we'll prepare the land to hand back to our client for the follow-on construction project. 